what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling, feeling good. good. Today, guys, we're back here with another video. Guys, my name is Steven, My name is Steven, and welcome to the best video, guys. Right. So, we're going to be reacting to Jordan Peterson, calmly dismantles feminism in front of two feminists. Damn, this is going to be crazy and wow. very brutal. Like. You dismantle feminism in front of two feminists. I just can't wait. For like this. the argument over there is going to be crazy. It's going to be so intense. Yeah, it's going to be so. Intense. Oh, Peterson, I, I really do like the man. Uh, mm. I'm glad to hear about him and discover him. I feel like he's one of the great men of our generations who are uncovering things and not taking things for lightly. He says things as they are, and he he don't mind who he offend, as long he's as he's speaking his mind and saying the truth. So everyone has their own opinion and everyone is free to share their own opinion out. So we can't wait to check this out and you know how it is. Talk okay, less about right, right. more. Let's get into this video. Jordan Peterson coming in this month who's Feminine, feminism in front of two feminists. And one of wow. our guests of the day, the other one today, is a man you may recognise, or maybe you don't. Jordan Peterson, Peterson has achieved that rare feat, becoming a global superstar academic. So how did he become so well known? He first came to national prominence in Canada in 2016 in a debate about new laws on gender identity. Bill C-16 made it an offence to refuse to call someone by their chosen gender pronoun. Jordan Peterson argued that this would infringe free speech, while some supporters of the bill said he was advocating prejudice. From there, his YouTube star took off, and he has now over one million subscribers. And his videos, where he talks everything from identity politics, which we've touched on, to the Bible, to Disney movies, have been viewed over 150 million times. Gosh, that's about the same number of viewers we have on this program. Ha. Last year, he supported ex-Google employee James Damore, who had been fired for suggesting men and women have different interests due to biological differences. And his latest book, 12 Rules for Life has taken him on a global tour promoting his ideas and just this week he sold out the 1,000-seater Emmanuel Centre around the corner here in Westminster. That was um, impressive. So Jordan, you've done endless interviews. You've been publicising yeah. You've been publicizing your book and they've generated plenty of heated debate. And I actually sold out the Apollo. It had 5,000 seats. All right, stop boasting. Um, <laughs> do you think, though, because of the heat that has been generated, that your views have been misrepresented at times? Oh, definitely, but that's, you know, that's part and parcel of the process. I did take a very um, uh, forceful stance, let's say, against some of the excesses of the radical left-wingers, and it's in their best interest to paint me as uh, somehow a figure of the extreme right, because then I don't have to be contended with. But, I mean, it's easy for people's views to be oversimplified in a very large public debate. I mean, in terms of some of the issues, I mean, you say you've been uh, painted as, a, as a, an extreme right winger. No, or, some people or, have tried yeah. that. Not very successfully, but they've tried it. And you came to prominence mm -hmm. um, in part over your opposition to this law that we just talked about yeah. in Canada, proposing the use of preferred pronouns for transgender people. Mm -hmm. Just for clarity. Mandating them. Yeah. Right. That Saying that you should issue. do it. No, but, that you had to do it. Uh, right, you had to do it by right. law. But just for clarity, just do you himself. think a trans woman is a real woman? <laughs> I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. Now, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Thank you. Why not? <clears throat> Me because too. I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies and they have female genitalia and they have an XX chromosome and, and I think the biological markers are relevant doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think that people should be treated with respect and dignity if they happen not to fit easily into a gender category. That's a different issue. Right. Yeah. But, but it's a matter of definition. And, and I actually think it's a foolish argument in some sense. Because what do you mean by real? Well, I mean, you've just clarified that, though. You, you, you don't think um, that a trans woman is a woman. And do you, do you think that that is what is behind 
or explains your opposition to this idea of a law mandating you to use a no. preferred pronoun is because you don't actually believe that that's the truth, that a trans woman is a woman and therefore you can't use that pronoun. No, that's not my argument at really? all. Really? Yeah, really. My yeah, argument uh, is that the no, government I know what your shouldn't compel is. voluntary speech. No, but I know what your argument is. And no, but that's really it. Exactly but the no motivation, behind, behind, no motivation it. behind it. motivation behind it. But you don't believe I wouldn't put everything on my li online in my life to take the stance I did unless I had thought that through very deeply. And I've thought it through very deeply. There aren't hidden motivations that have to do with some arbitrary prejudice against trans people. Okay. It's purely, pure and simply this. There's never been a time in English common law history where the government compelled speech and the Canadian government dared to do that. And that was unacceptable. And they masked it with this show of, of compassion for the oppressed. And I don't buy it. Right. But you would, as I think you said, at an individual level, mm -hmm. if somebody Wouldn't asked have. you, if, you know, somebody asked you to use a particular pronoun, you would do mm -hmm. so. Well, I have. You have. Yes. Right. Fine. Yes. Let's talk about feminism. Are you a feminist? Uh, no, not as it's currently defined. Certainly not. No. Uh, well, in any other definition? Well, I think that anybody who doesn't think that the the competitive landscape should be opened up for equality of opportunity is not thinking. And so everyone's interests are better served if people have as equal access to opportunity to display their talents and to manifest their talents in the world as possible. So in that sense, certainly. But feminism now, it's as far, and this is why it's so deeply unpopular, a very small minority of women in the UK identify as feminists. And the reason for that is it's primarily become an ideological weapon. And it's an ideology that I don't I, I detest, actually, the well, ideology that it's associated with, collectivist ideology. Right. I mean, it, OK, and that's your view about feminism. Aisha, are you a feminist? Oh, absolutely. I'm a very proud uh, feminist. And when I was um, a special advisor in government, I worked on women and equality issues. And I'm very proud, actually, of a piece of legislation I got on the statute book with my former boss, Harriet Harman, the Equality Act. Uh, in 2010, which strengthened our anti-discrimination um, laws. And I fought very hard to get more women into public life, into the Labour Party. And yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm very, very proud of being a feminist, hence my pink dress. Oh, well, <laughs> all right. Um, obviously reverting to type then Absolutely, in the pink dress. Absolutely, well. Um, hmm. You would like men to regain or reclaim their strength physically, mentally and morally. Is that broadly correct? I would say morally, fundamentally, but I think the other things go along with that. Right, and, and if that But it is... isn't men, precisely, who I'm, who I'm speaking to. It's, it's people. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm actually interested in individuals, mm. and I'm interested in their fortification against tragedy. You know, every time I do an interview, the interview is always political. It's always mm. political. Well, the, cl the clue is in the title of this program. <laughs> we are the Daily oh, Politics. Oh, no, no, fair enough. No, 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 fair enough, fair enough. And I'm, I'm not casting oh. aspersions <laughs> at this program, but the fundamental news that's important about what I'm doing isn't the political element. And the people who but talk what? to me don't talk politically. They well, say yeah. they've watched but, but my part, lectures. But part and of that it is, sorry, is that I think for a lot of people, the kind of personal to does down. become the, 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 the political. Or the political becomes the personal. Yeah, and I think in terms of the... Yeah, but the, in the, this I, situation, a lot of people are wrong because primarily what's happening is people are watching my lectures and as a consequence, their lives are improving dramatically. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure they are. I'm sure people are like, have had a huge conversion after. It's and they're much happier once they've been. It's not a conversion. Once it's not a been. conversion. But it's, what, it's what I would like to do is, is kind of almost, I think at the moment, the discussion about feminism is very d d divisive. And it, sometimes it can sort of be like, OK, men have to lose and women have to gain. Actually, mm -hmm. everybody has a lot to gain mm. by greater equality. Now, whether you get the equality of outcome that you want, I think only time will tell. But certainly, equality of opportunity is, is very important. And actually, well, we a, lot, and a lot of men would, would benefit from that. So I think a lot of it, men, men are having a lot of crises at the moment in terms of mental, mental health, mm. suicide issues, um, their own sense of identity, because I think some of the stereotypes put on men are quite limiting for them as well. I think they make men quite unhappy as well. The so devil's in the details with regards to equality because I'm a, an advocate of equality of opportunity. But and I outcomes. Think the idea, outcomes. That's an appalling doctrine. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hang because on. you well, have to produce an unbelievably potent bureauc bureaucracy to make the ever greater and ever finer distinctions that are necessary to enforce equality of outcome. How many mm. group differences are you going to equalize across? 
Is it just gender and sex? How many genders? No, so gender and ethnicity? How many genders? I think How many what, ethnicities? What are, How many races? Uh, we'll let Aisha answer. I think what, what people are trying to do with this, and certainly as somebody who you know has looked to do sort to sort of do this myself, I think you set yourself ambitions for, for what you would like to see, and then you try and remove as many of the, the structural barriers and mm. obstacles. So you try and create that you know, fair crack of the whip mm -hmm. and that equality of opportunity to see where you get to with the outcomes. That, that's now, fine. Now, we are in very early stages. It's only 100 years since you know, women got the vote mm. in this country. You know, we have had a long-established patriarchal society and set up for, for a long time in the world in this country. So I think we have a long way to go to see where it plays out. There is no country in the world where you know, we really do have gender equality um, properly yet in terms of dis real decision making and, and real Some of the power. Scandinavian countries maybe? But I, th they're still not quite there and I think All you've right. spoken a lot about this. The Scandina there's still a way to go in Scandinavia. Things are not perfect well, in I Scandinavia haven't, I haven't at all. I have spoken about that specifically. I've spoken about you spoke the, about the right stuff yesterday. I, you talked about the Scandinavian. Well, I've spoken about the fact that, you see, one of the things that's happened in the analysis of the differences between men and women is that the social constructionist claim is that mm. the differences are socially constructed, mm. right? Is that it's a consequence of environment that men and women differ. But what the scientific literature indicates is that as cultures become more egalitarian, like they have in Scandinavia, the differences between men and women actually increase rather than decreasing, which is a direct repost to the social constructionist view. So they just deny all that. The biggest differences in the world in interest and temperament are between Scandinavian men and women. It's exactly the opposite of what everyone predicted. Can I just pick up on one thing you said a little earlier in the interview, yeah. which you said it's the moral guidance that you are, are, are focused on. You think that yeah. is particularly important. How do you square that with the behavior of perhaps arguably, you know, a prominent alpha male president of the United States, Donald Trump? Um, when his behavior, I mean, he is accused of having an affair with a porn star when his wife was pregnant. How does that fit with morally reclaiming? Um, well, you know, I would the say that was rather clearly immoral. Right. Yeah, but you not, would not still, to be a target for emulation. But you still would have voted for him over well, Hillary to be Clinton fair, those, as, to be as fair, an identity though, politics. The, I mean, it's just how, uh, how do you... None of that was on the table. And I said I might have voted for him on a whim. That's but all. you also said, say you started so. out feeling quite close to Hillary Clinton. Can I just come yeah. on, on the... Very on the, quickly, because we've got quickly. to move on. In a way, I don't, really, I don't care what Trump does in terms of his private life, but sure. what I don't have is him stopping or potentially stopping other women having agency over their reproductive rights and lots of men taking those decisions, It's all about where the moral outrage lies and what's yeah. more morally outrageous um, in, in people's eyes. Is it his behaviour or the identity politics for you? on the? Anyway, we'll have to discuss this another time. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I just feel like this baby right Jace, now. Jace, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> My okay. opinion is like they are, they are always cutting him short. Yeah. And they are trying to use his words against him. So that is exactly the, what they are trying to do. They are just trying to like cut out some things out. Whenever you want to make an opinion, they just don't want him to speak out of his entire mind. Look at Peterson, whenever he's speaking, he keeps on speaking, he keeps on talking, and the more he keeps on talking, the more he's uncovering things. So, then cutting him short, I really don't like that. And them using his own words against them, it's, it makes no sense to me, because they clearly are picking out some part of what he sees against him, not just the entire thing. And that's for me, it's, I don't suppose it's it's kind of like rubbish for me. Uh, I get Peterson point, and I only support Peterson because I get his ideology, and it's it's totally true. If you follow his words, if you read his book, if you listen to what he's what he talks about, you will see his clear point of view. Totally, a clear point of view. I know women has their own right to to write of their own body. It's 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 not nice for you to like be be the controller of someone's body because it's definitely not yours everyone has their own choice uh, and everyone has their own decision to make uh, i really agree with what he was saying and the ladies over there they were just, just like it come back against him like both of them are just facing him facing yeah. him it was way too much it was way too much and he was trying to clear his thoughts his own mind he was trying to like clarify it for them and they are not giving him and space
I really don't appreciate that. I really don't don't like that. I would love to watch more about how the interview went about, but that moment over there got me pissed. I really don't like it. And I, I need to give him space to speak his own mind out. You are giving him his words back to him and you are not giving him space to clarify himself. Well, how does that make sense? It's, it's just somehow for me. What do you think? When I listen to him speak, sometimes I feel um, they're trying to put words into his mouth. Yeah. Like they're just trying to like change or frame his statement. Rephrase it. And it's not nice. fair, honestly. And I love the fact that he's a very outspoken person. So as soon as you're saying, he's going to pick on it and give it back to you. So he doesn't let you, um, how that says, doesn't let you rephrase his statement, doesn't let you pick on it and say something differently for what he already said. I love the way he's very outspoken. And I feel this is a very big topic that um, 11 minutes won't cover up because yeah. it's just about 11 minutes for this video. It won't cover it all because feminism is a very broad topic on its own and there's a lot of sub topic under it. So when you were talking about that um, reproductive system when they give the authority to the men, I don't know the part she's talking about, but I feel when it comes to maybe, um, let me say we have intercourse and then I'm pregnant and mm. I don't want to keep it, but you want to keep it. It's kind of... I don't know how to put it to you guys. It's kind of unfair, I feel, to you. Because it's your baby, it's your sperm, and I don't want to keep it. I get it's my body, but it doesn't just work out. You both formed it together. Because, yeah, exactly. A piece of you is inside it. So if you want to take it off, then what about me? What about what I dropped there? Like, <laughs> Forgive me for laughing, though. But I feel it's a very broad topic on its own, and people need to just sit down and talk about it. Yeah. I love the fact that when he said about the feminism, he said that if it's about the equality, it's up for it. Like, it's up for people getting more chance, people getting, like, being able to do other stuff. Yeah. And they should not just put it based on your gender and stuff like that, or your sex. So I love the fact that he's up for that. Um, mm. But feminism is very broad, and there's a lot of differences, a lot of people are adding to it. So yeah. it makes it seem somehow so i really do enjoy it and the transgender part also like it was just too fast i needed it to be slow and because peterson had a lot of things to say he's so intelligent and his words i really do love picking it out because he he's very smart honestly he's very it was smart. like what do you define as a real woman yeah so transgender is not a real woman like you don't really have a reproductive system of a real woman if you're talking about the gender or sex like yeah that is what it is in biology. You're supposed to have those reproductive systems. You're supposed to have the XX and stuff like that. So, if you're talking about a transgender, so what makes a transgender a real woman? Because she said yeah. what real. Real woman. So it was that she should clarify that word. Yeah. It's it's really nice of me watching this video, and I would love to watch more about Peterson. Guys, comment down below more videos like this for us to check out and. Um, Subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. Give us thoughts. What do you think about the video? What was your opinion? Just share your thoughts with us and we'll definitely check the comments below, guys. You know how it is, guys. We'll see you guys on the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't know papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales all